Hey everyone, thanks for watching. What we're going to look at today are the palpable bony landmarks related to chest imaging. Now to this day, I will contend that the trickiest x-ray exam we do is the AP portable chest x-ray. Sounds kind of funny, but it's easily the most repeated exam, and it's kind of unfortunate since this exam is pretty much the bread and butter of what we do. But no two people have the same chest anatomy, and because of this, it's it's important to, again, use your x-ray vision in order to be as accurate as possible. Uh, so here are a few tricks that I've learned along the way. Number one, contrary to common sense, the width of the average chest is actually more than the height. Uh, I don't have the specifics in front of me right now, but there is some documentation in the Bontrager positioning book. Anyway, because the average chest is wider than it is tall, you'll almost always have better luck with a crosswise cassette than lengthwise. Unless, of course, you can clearly see uh, both sides of your light field on, on either side of the chest. Uh, number two, don't use the shoulders as a positioning guide. One guideline that the books give as an example is to leave an inch or two of light above the shoulders, but most people's shoulders, well, people's shoulders in general sit in very different positions. Some are high, some are low, and especially on a larger patient in a supine or semi-erect position, using the shoulders as a guide will almost always leave you with way too much space on the top of your film, and you'll have clipped costophrenic angles on the bottom of your film. So what you can do is you can use one of two different methods instead. Uh, first, if you, suspect, if you suspect that your patient has long lungs, you can use the C7 prominence as the top of your film. And what this does, since the lung field starts obviously at the first rib, using this method will put the lung apices very near to the top of your film. Now if the person has sh short lungs or if there's you know a short person you don't necessarily want to use this technique because then you'll just get short lungs at the top of your film and, and a whole bunch of abdomen at the bottom of your film it might throw off your your S your S number on your on your uh, on your CR reader or whatnot. Um, anyway the second thing that you can do if, if it is just an average sized person you can use the jugular notch and the xiphoid process as uh, centering guides. What you can do is just essentially center your cassette right in the middle of these two very easily palpable landmarks and you're almost always going to be centered as you can see here. Uh, third little trick is what you need to do and as you can kind of see here in order for that to be the center of your film you need to angle your tube so that it's perpendicular to the patient's sternum. Now people have asked me how much to angle the tube or why we even need to angle the tube at all on, a, on an AP portable chest x-ray and the best way that I can explain is uh, to think about think about your typical upright PA chest x-ray and ideally what you want is you want your patient to kinda hunch their shoulders forward placing their chest as close to the IR as possible and what this does is it actually places the sternum parallel to the IR which gives the maximum amount of visualization of the lung fields and it also also ensures that the heads of the clavicles don't obscure the apices of the lungs. So when you angle your tube downward in an AP picture you're actually just mimicking the standard PA position and you're going to angle down again so that you're perpendicular to the sternum. It's going to be right on every time. Uh, number four, one last one last note, uh, this is just kind of something that you don't see too often, but uh, it's also related to the tube angulation. Uh, if your patient is very kyphotic, you won't need to angle the tube as much, if at all. Uh, the patient will be naturally hunched forward into the proper position. In fact, the more kyphotic that a patient is, the less tube angulation you'll need, and in, in some extreme cases, you may find yourself actually angling upward just a little bit. So that is all. That is today's lesson. Uh, check back later this week for some, maybe some hip and pelvis anatomy and positioning tips at IHaveXRayVision.com. Thanks.